This square mile is probably the most sacred square mile in the city of Omaha. There is no place that I know of where every individual that comes to work every day, their goal is to make sure that someone else's life is better. That's where I get my passion from. Boys Town is a place where kids can come and they can like work on their skills that they need to be successful when they graduate high school. We say here at Boys Town that graduation is the happiest yet saddest day on our campus because we know that we have a population of young adults that really don't have a place to go when they leave. And we started to see the need for successful futures. The Successful Futures program has Successful Futures specialists, which they're all assigned a youth, and they basically break down everything that we're going to need for after graduation. They really help us with budgeting, living situations, food, everything that you can imagine. So Successful Futures, I mean, it's done a lot for me. Tony, he's compassionate, he's caring. He always seems like he's like five steps ahead of everybody. We were in his car and he was talking about how he wanted to make a new building and his vision was just so beyond anything we were even thinking. And we were like, wow, really? All that? And he was like, yeah, don't, don't y'all deserve the most, the best? I just remember him saying that like three times. Tony and I grew up together. We, uh, we've known each other for almost 40 years. Tony and I were kids at Boys Town together. We were family teachers for several years together. And now we're both in leadership roles at Boys Town. For somebody to commit that much to children is remarkable. You know, when Tony talks to a youth here, he's been there. And so he has a relationship at a level that most people don't. A priest by the name of Father John Markham found my brother and I on the streets of Detroit and offered us an opportunity to come to this place called Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska. My great-grandmother raised me and my, my, my two brothers up until the age of 13 when she passed away from cancer. I often say that I only had two places that I was going to end up if my grandmother had not passed away. One would have been incarcerated and the other one would have been dead. I would have been just lost to the streets. If you talk to Boys Town alumni and youth, you hear this common theme that they'll say to you, if it wasn't for Boys Town, I'd either be dead or in prison. We study it and we have a very high success rate if we can have a kid early enough and in treatment long enough to make a difference. There was a young man who went through the program and he started his job and he lost his job and it was in a small town that was about an hour drive from here. This young man is extremely talented. He ended up in a situation where he became homeless. So every night he would drive back to campus and sleep in his car because he felt safe on this campus. We approached him and asked, what's going on, Devin? Why are you parked out here? And he's like, well, I don't have a place to live. Well, yes, you do. We have a place here on our campus. He's driving two hours every day because he didn't feel safe where he was at, but he felt safe in this square mile. He is doing extremely well and he is probably one of our most successful young men in our Successful Futures program right now. Tony's deserving of this void because he always has us first. He was in our shoes at one point, so he understands the adversity we had to overcome. Most of us thought that we weren't gonna get very far at all, not even graduate high school. And now I am planning to go to a four-year college and receive a degree. I never thought that would happen. And because of Tony Jones, that's possible now. Tony, you've helped so many kids over the years. And I say, I'm proud of you. We both come from a very hard life before Boys Town. Just knowing that he's continuing the mission, I am very proud of him. So often, young people come to Boys Town and they're broken. And when a kid's able to see that he or she is valued, that gives me satisfaction. That grows my heart. If I lived my life just concerned about me. I have failed in my life. But if I live my life concerned about others, I feel that I have succeeded. I lean on Father Flanagan's words that the work will continue because this is God's work, not his work. And I want to be a part of continuing the work that he started to help heal families and children.